Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Emil Hornung, and I am very pleased that you decided to join this, presenta this presentation, especially as this is quite late today. Uh, my talk is titled Building a Code Review Culture, and during which I would like to uh, share with you my experience and knowledge about the process of code review. Uh, at the very beginning, let me quickly introduce myself and give you a short context of this presentation. So I've been a Java developer since 2009, and for all these 10 years, uh, I was uh, creating, uh, developing and maintaining web applications, uh, first as a full-stack developer and lately as a back-end developer. I've also been a technical or team leader uh, in different uh, companies and different teams, and currently I'm working uh, at JLabs, which is 100% Polish company with headquarters here in uh, Krakow, but also offices in Warsaw when I'm working, and also in Germany, in Munich. Uh, my experience is also um, in enterprise projects, so I won't be talking how it looks in open source projects, and uh, also it might be slightly backend oriented, but even if you are a full stack developer, front end developer, or uh, mobile developer, I think you will uh, gain a lot from this uh, presentation. Okay, maybe let's start with a quick few questions to you uh, to make sure you are still not asleep or uh, sober enough. So, could you please raise your hand? Uh, who of you does code reviews? Okay, I think it's uh, at least half. Uh, and who of you likes doing code reviews, actually? Could you please raise your hand? Okay, that's like a one third, I think. That's nice. And who of you uh, doesn't like it, really? Could you please raise your hand? Okay, yeah, there are still some people there. Okay, so, so my observation was that uh, for a lot, a lot of us, uh, a code review, it's an uh, unpleasant thing to do. Uh, definitely not the best part of our day. I think we rather prefer to uh, write our own code than review or read someone else's code. And also, I think that many of us uh, do code reviews kind of spontaneously, without uh, any structure, without a deeper thought. Uh, and so my reason for this talk would be to uh, share with you what we can do to make code reviews more pleasant for us and thus more effective. So, quick agenda. Uh, I will start with what code review is and what it is not, then why we should even do code review, uh, followed by how to prepare good pull requests, then how to review code, in particular how often, uh, things about checklists and uh, psychological aspects, then a few things we shouldn't do, so don'ts, uh, and disadvantages and costs and how to address them, uh, and we'll end up with a, with a summary. Uh, okay, so let's get started. Uh, I think all of us here know what code review is, actually. Uh, but uh, let me clarify on one thing, because uh, when we go to Wikipedia, we can see the definition that says, code review is a systematic examination of computer source code. And actually, I don't really like this definition, uh, mainly because of this word examination. So I would like to, I prefer to, to use a definition that says that code review is a systematic discussion between two or more de developers about changes to the code, okay? Um, now, what code review is not, what I would like to uh, emphasize here. So number one would be that, that code review is not a way to measure code quality or uh, pointing mistakes. What I mean here is that we should avoid uh, this attitude that, um, when we receive more comments, it means that our code is worse. It doesn't work like that. Like that. Actually, the more comments we have uh, only means that the process uh, of code review is effective. So we should rather be happy because of that. Another thing I would like to mention here is that code review is not an explicit uh, quality assurance method. This should be done, done by tests, and this is something uh, like Uncle Bob mentions in one of his, of his book, that quality assurance should find nothing. Uh, I think it should be the same with, uh, with a code review. We should deliver uh, production-ready code uh, that we know that 
uh, we did our best and we know that it works and not challenge our colleagues to find bugs there, okay? Eventually they will find some issues, but that's not their role. And it's not the role of the, of the code review itself, okay? So <clears throat> before we will start talking about how to optimize the process, let's uh, think about why we should even do uh, this, okay? So for that reason, let me uh, present to you uh, results of, uh, of a research conducted in 2013. Um, and so the research uh, had two parts. And the first part was a survey where authors asked uh, developers uh, about what uh, are their motivation uh, for doing code review. And so they can um, answer give three answers, so what's my top motivation, my second motivation, and my third motivation. Uh, and so we can see the results based on uh, more than 1,000 answers, and you can see that uh, number one, the top uh, motivation for doing code review um, is finding defects. Then code improvement, uh, then alternative solutions, knowledge transfer, and so on and so forth. And so there was the second part of this research, uh, and uh, it was about analyzing actual code review comments. So the authors took the code review comments and tried to assign to one of this category to see what are the real uh, categories of this, uh, of this comments. And so you can see the results on the right, right hand side. Uh, and you can notice that number one is the code improvements, number two is understanding, number three is social communication, and number four is defects. Right, so this concludes us to the summary of this of this research that says that our study reveals that while finding defects remains the main motivation for review, reviews are less about defects than expected, and instead provide additional benefits such as knowledge transfer, increased team awareness, and creation of alternative solutions to problems. There was another research on code reviews conducted in 2014, which has a very similar conclusion. Uh, they say that MCR, which is Modern Code Reviews process, seems to be generally more valuable for improving maintainability than for fixing defects. For example, Modern Code Reviews might be recommended for software systems that require high maintainability, such as long-lived software systems. And I don't know what is your experience, what, in, uh, what kind of projects you are working or worked on, but I have never been given a project that was about to end in a three months. It always was planned for, for much, much longer. And so this is the place where you uh, should really invest in the process of, of code review. So let's... Uh, sum up all the motivations uh, for doing uh, code review. Uh, <clears throat> as I already mentioned, uh, we shall do code review to initiate discussion about the code to promote communication in general in our team, uh, to share knowledge about the project itself, so to increase uh, so-called bus factor, so the number of people who uh, possess a knowledge that is needed for project to be continued and also for uh, sharing knowledge about the programming, the programming language, techniques, uh, frameworks, uh, principles we follow, and so on. Uh, another very interesting motivation and uh, attribute of code review is uh, that it spread code ownership. So instead of having my and your code, we more getting an hour's code. What I mean here is that we uh, trying to avoid situation when there is a uh, back on production and somebody says, okay, I have no idea how to fix it. It was John's code. I haven't seen it uh, ever. So only John can, can, uh, can fix the bug, for example. Yeah? So we're trying to avoid the situation of code review. Uh, another thing that we uh, do code review for is to learn uh, from others and also to teach others. Very uh, effective way to develop our skills, actually. Uh, of course, this all leads to improved general quality of the code, and it leads to, uh, um, it decreases number of defects uh, in our code, but this is some kind of a side, uh, side effect of, um, of, whole, of the whole process. Okay, so uh, now uh, let's talk about how we can make this process more effective, and actually code review doesn't start when we are 
starting a review of the pull request. It actually starts when we are creating the pull request. So what we can do uh, to prepare good pull requests? Uh, so the first thing I would like to mention here, which is the most important actually, uh, is to make sure that, that your PR is small enough. And we can uh, have a different measurements of, uh, of the size of the PR, but one of them, uh, and most, most obvious, is numbers of lines of code. Um, and so it, here you can see the graph from the book called Best Kept Secrets of Peer Code Review, published by SmartBear in 2013. Um, and you can see the relationship between the lines of code under review and the defect de density. Uh, and so, ca so can you can see that uh, the defect density decreases with the number of lines of code, and after more or less 400, uh, it's almost zero. So uh, I don't want you to treat this 400 lines of code like a very precise number because it will differ um, uh, depending on what languages you are using uh, and what kind of uh, application you are working on. But uh, I would like to encourage you to find this number in your uh, in your project and try to not uh, not to exceed these lines of not these numbers of lines of codes in uh, in a single pull request. Um, also, there was a great tweet about it uh, some time ago that says, "Ask a programmer to review 10 lines of code, and he will find 10 issues. Ask him to do 500 lines of code, and he will say, oh, it looks good.' And uh, I think you 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 might be familiar with that. And this is this is how it really works. Um, and one thing to mention here is maybe we shouldn't be too uh, shouldn't be happy to to fast too soon if we are getting no comments uh, on our review because maybe it was so big that somebody didn't even uh, look into it. Okay. So another measurement of the size of the PR uh, can be how many. Uh, issue it, it addresses, and I would like uh, to, um, to encourage you to to be sure that the PR you are creating addresses not not more than one issue. Okay, so it's a little bit like single responsibility principle on level of pull request. So, as an author, I should ask myself a question: Does this PR really address one issue only, uh, or maybe I can divide it uh, somehow? In particular. Um, refactoring should be done in a separate pull request. Yeah, I really um, think that we should do refactoring uh, as as we encounter some problems, not as a separate task, but uh, it would be very beneficial if we put it on the separate PR and then go back to our main work. Another uh, example would be that main logic and the glue code might be in separate PRs. What I mean here is that we are, we are creating a new feature so, for example, we are implementing uh, a new component. Uh, we can uh, create a PR for that and then plug, uh, plug in all the new code into the existing one with the separate PR. Uh, another idea um, to make PR small would be to create a um, pull request to a feature branch instead of a master because for some reasons we don't want to uh, merge into master only part of our work. Uh, so every other PRs would go to this uh, feature branch and then afterwards we can have a one big PR to the master but we shouldn't, it, it is not, um, uh, we don't need to um, review it actually because it was reviewed uh, previously, we can just make some sanity check, okay? And uh, if we for some reasons don't want to use this, those feature branches and this kind of division, maybe we can at least divide it, our, our PR into separate commits so the reviewer can mm, uh, is, is not uh, forced to review PR all at once, but commit by commit. It might be also very helpful. Okay, so another important uh, thing when creating a pull request would be to give a context, a short description, uh, a reason for the change, okay? Sometimes Jira link will be enough, sometimes not. It depends uh, how good is, uh, uh, are your um, tasks in, in whatever issue tracker you use. Generally, put yourself in reviewer's shoes and ask yourself a question, what somebody else has to know to do a proper review? Okay, 
And a very quite interesting thing here is that only preparing a description uh, will make you rethink your job uh, and can lead to some changes. And this is actually the fastest feedback loop you can get from yourself. So it's also be very beneficial. Uh, another thing to remember as a, as, an, as a PR author would be to put all team members as reviewers to promote knowledge sharing. In particular, new team members uh, should always be um, assigned to, to the pull request and also, especially junior developers, okay? They have to uh, learn somehow about our project and about our techniques. So they should be able to see all the PRs that are in the project. I'm not claiming that they have to have right to approve or decline our pull request, uh, but we can also uh, take this option off and just let them uh, review and ask the question and actually talk about the code. Um, last thing in this part, uh, the last advice from uh, here would be review your code before creating uh, a pull request. And there are also studies that shows that uh, 10 to 22% of changes are self-motivated, so are done by ourselves. So again, very beneficial, very short feedback loop we can have from ourselves. All right, now let's get to the second part. So how to review code, actually, okay? So the most important thing here would be that the context is the king. We should know the reason for the change, uh, because same change can be good or bad depending on the context. It's like uh, with domain-driven design that the same term in different contexts ha has actually a different meaning. Uh, in Java world, for example, if somebody writes synchronized code, is it bad or good? It depends, because if we will be using this code in a single-threaded environment, then it's an overhead, yeah? If we will be using it in the multi-threaded environment, then it's, and it's re really needed. So we need to know the context. Next thing, uh, as a reviewer, would be make sure that the PR is small enough. And if we see that uh, we are overwhelmed by the, by the PR, it's, big, it's too big for us, we should immediately uh, go back to, to the author and politely ask him to divide it, um, probably also uh, with some suggestion how we can divide it, because sometimes it's not an easy task. But we shouldn't let ourselves drag in by the big pull request. It very kills uh, productivity uh, very quickly. Um, and so another thing uh, as a reviewer would be to find the best place to start. Because uh, our tools like GitHub, uh, Crucible, um, uh, whatever you use, uh, shows changes in alphabetical order. Yeah? And so I um, compare it to reading a book, um, but not in the order of chapters that are, um, that are appearing there, but uh, sorting them alphabetically and then reading it in that order. It doesn't make sense. So, um, my advice here, I am uh, very fond of um, test-driven design and, and tests in general, so I'm seeking for um, a test that describes this change and starting from the test and then go to the, um, to the code, the production code that uh, fulfills the test and, uh, and go this way. Um, another topic uh, would be uh, about the pace. So, first of all, we shouldn't rush too much. Uh, what I mean here is to avoid a situation when someone is telling us, okay, hurry up, just I prove my PR. Um, everything what has to be done is done. You're actually blocking my, uh, my work, yeah? Uh, we are waiting for the review, which is useless. Um, we shouldn't take this attitude. Um, I would say that mm, code review is more like sightseeing than rushing uh, through a highway. Because when we are uh, going on a highway, our goal is to go from point A to point B uh, as quick as possible. And that's not our goal in the, um, uh, during the code review. It's not about giving uh, a proof without reading a code. Um, so it's more like sightseeing. So we want to get acquainted with this code, uh, see, uh, uh, see some details, uh, ask some questions. Uh, and so the more attention you will pay, the more details uh, you will see. And this is what we care about, actually, during the code review. Um, natural thing would be to go through all changes more than once, okay? Uh, and also, if 
you have a one or two or three liner uh, pull request, uh, I really encourage you to try to uh, take your stopwatch and uh, spend at least three minutes for this kind of pull request and see how many uh, actually questions you can ask and um, how many details you can see in there. It is uh, a very interesting uh, experience actually. And also, if we will keep in mind that uh, reviewing someone else's code is more like an opportunity to learn something than just an unpleasant duty, we will not be having this um, eager to, to rush. Yeah? So let's keep it in mind. Um, on the other hand, we shouldn't spend uh, too much time. And again, this is the uh, graph taken from the best kept secrets of uh, peer code review book, where you can see the relationship between the average number of defects found and the um, a number of time spent in, uh, um, uh, on, the, on the code review. And so we can see the more time you spend in code review, the more defects or comments you will find, but after around 60 minutes, uh, there is no actual raise of this number, okay? And this is because how our brains work, so we cannot actually focus more on this kind of activity, which is kind of a passive activity, if you can say that. Um, so we just lose our focus after the 60 minutes, and so there's no really uh, a reason uh, spending uh, more time. Uh, if you stick to the rule to have small PR, 60 minutes will be really, uh, really a lot, but sometimes you will encounter a big PR that you want to deal with, uh, and if you see that you are spending more than 20, uh, sorry, 60 minutes, just uh, give it a break for like a 20 minutes and then go back to this, to this PR to be more productive. Okay, um, so about reviewing code, it is better to read a code by yourself than having a walkthrough by uh, the author. And why is that? This is because if you ask somebody to present uh, his or her code because you don't want to read all the things, uh, you will be listening to, to the author and nodding your head in agreement, but actually after some time, like, I don't know, few days or weeks or months, when you are... Uh, you will have to um, work with this code, like fix some bug or use it or whatever, uh, you will see that, uh, okay, I don't know what's going on here and uh, why, is the, why is it written this way? And you will be having a lot of questions, okay? So it is better to go uh, through, your, through the code by yourself. Uh, then, if a code needs some explanation during the code review and you are not sure if it's you missing some knowledge about the, the project or, um, or the te technology, uh, the most natural thing, uh, or, or maybe it you're missing um, uh, uh, some, some, some other, other knowledge. Um, so the most natural um, uh, thing here might be to go to the author and again ask about clarification. But it would be a similar situation like mentioned before. It is better to ask uh, another um, colleague uh, about this code. And so if he or she knows and understands the code, then it means, okay, I'm missing something here. But if another person also doesn't really understand it, then it means, okay, we can write this code better. Okay, so let's, let's do some changes here. And very important, uh, mm, a very important uh, thing to mention is that uh, when we are asking the author for some explanation, let's change it into code, actually, because this is our source of true. We will not be going back to our uh, pull request to see clarifications. We want everything to be in a code. Um, and so we should do some, uh, do it through, uh, through refactoring. Uh, or if, we if it can be done by refactoring, let's explain all this uh, tricky things uh, through our tests. Okay, another, th another thing, a little bit from my autopsy, is that when something is written in another way, you would write it, it doesn't mean it's bad, it's just different, okay? In uh, computer science and software development, I think there, for every problem, there are uh, like tens of ways to, um, to solve it, and uh, sometimes there is no uh, strictly better or worse solution. So it's always good to tell the author that there is some alternative solution 
Uh, but when we don't have any strict arguments uh, for, for our code, uh, I would stick to the rule that it's always author's choice which solution uh, he would stick to. Okay? And we should also remember to, as a reviewer, to pay attention to mistakes and errors that appear uh, again and again from the same author, because it shouldn't happen. This is why we have this process to, to learn from it, so this uh, shouldn't take place. Okay, so now let's have a few words about how often we should do it, because I think you encountered this uh, situation when you were waiting for a review uh, for, for a really, really long time, and you feel that it's totally ineffective. So what we can do here? So I would say the most important thing is to do it on a regular basis, uh, at least once a day. And I like to stick to the rule that if the PR is created today, um, it should be reviewed tomorrow at the latest. Okay, we can of course do it uh, quicker, but this is the slowest pace we can have. Uh, if you have problems with it, you you really don't like to do it. You can try to make it a habit. Okay, so for example, pick one time of a day, like the first time you do when you start uh, working, or the last time before lunch, or first time before lunch, or whatever you choose, and uh, do the review. Uh, at this constant time, and so it will make this um, uh, process like more automatic and more unconscious, and it will be easier for you to to get used to it. Uh, also, sometimes uh, uh, code reviews are getting longer because we are encountering some something called review ping pong. So. I create a PR, someone is giving me comments, then I am addressing the comments, then someone is reviewing again, giving another comments, and so on and so forth. And so to avoid this situation, let's just quickly uh, pair up and uh, move things forward. But remember, do the initial review on your own. Also, uh, to speed up things, you can try so-called draft PRs if you are using GitHub. Draft PRs uh, is the mechanism that you can uh, actually show the code because uh, it's, it's a PR which you cannot merge. There is no merge button, actually. So to show the code to the others, to, to make a chunk of the codes as small as, as possible to review, to, to talk about it. All right, now a few things about checklists. And also a question for you. Could you please raise your hand? Who of you uses checklists during code reviews? Is there anyone? Like one, two, several person. OK, uh, that means that it will be uh, beneficial for, for other guys. So, of course, we, uh, we know uh, checklists. We use checklists uh, on every day. Uh, also, there are in other professions, they're using uh, checklists like um, the surgeons, pilots, cleaning service, and so on. And I, I'm sure we are using checklists as developers, too. But yet, we somehow forget that we can make use of them uh, during uh, code reviews. So um, I would like to encourage you to, uh, uh, to prepare uh, authors and reviewers checklists, yeah? so two checklists. And uh, simply think of what is important during code review in your project, in your team, and, and put it on the, on the checklist. You can have separate checklists uh, like per person. It doesn't matter. They will differ across projects. And uh, they won't be written in uh, stone. They will evolve as the project evolves or um, as our team evolves, actually. Um, uh, important thing here is that we should put things that might be missing because, again, for our brains, it is quite easy to spot that something is wrong. It's more difficult to spot that something is missing. So let's put some, those things on, uh, uh, on our checklists. And Please remember uh, that when you have a reviewer checklist, your own code should always also pass it, okay? So uh, also use it for, for your own code. Now, let me quickly share with you my two sample checklists. So first for, for the author, and this is the very uh, short one. So number one, check the size of the PR, a number of files changed, number of, of lines changed, number of issues addressed, and can I divide it somehow? Isn't it too big? 
Number two, give a short description of a task if Jira is not sufficient. Number three, advise si starting point if needed, it might be helpful. And number four, go through all changes last time. Especially it is good to look at it on the GitHub, for example, if you're using it, not in the IDE, because it's basically it looks different. Yeah? So you can have different perspectives, same as the reviewer. Okay, so um, my second sample checklist is for a reviewer. Okay, and it's a little bit longer, but uh, I hope you will find some uh, inspiration here. So number one, what was the task? Uh, is the change described with proper context? What's the reason for the change? Okay. Uh, number two, is the PR small enough? Uh, and does it address one issue only? And again, if not, I'm going back to the other and politely ask him to, to change it. Uh, number three, how would I implement it on a very general level? And this is quite interesting because when I try to uh, figure it out and find that, okay, I actually I don't know where to start and how to handle this, it will mean that, okay, this is the, the, the review I will learn quite a lot, so I'm more eager to, to do it. Uh, number four, which tests describe the change, so what's the first file to review? Number five is the code easy to read, including test, of course. And uh, this is because we will be reading uh, this code much more um, frequently than, than writing it. Yeah? We we'll write it only once, but we'll read it uh, a few. Number six are classes in proper uh, packages. So this is about the, the modularity. Number seven uh, are classes, variables, methods uh, named properly, because this is one of the toughest task in uh, software development, naming things. Also, when if you are following domain-driven design here, it is also important to see if you are following ubiquitous language uh, or not making up uh, some terms that are not used by others or we are m using uh, not proper terms for, for some things. Uh, number eight, does every new class have a single and clear responsibility. Number nine, is every change covered with a test? Um, number 10, are there any tests changed? And if so, uh, it should be checked whether the change was necessary because maybe somebody changed the test that was failing, now it's passing, but actually he or she changed the behavior of our application, which wasn't uh, what this task was about. Number 11, are there any test tests removed? And also, if so, are all of the cases justified? And uh, number 12, is the, co is the code of good uh, enough quality? And this is the very broad topic. But uh, for example, I following rules like uh, principles like solid, dry, keys, Yagni, etc. Uh, but of course, you can use different, uh, different measurements for that. If you don't know what measurement you use, you can also use uh, so-called WTFs per, per minute, of course, as well. Um, all right, so now let's get to next uh, topic mm, called psychological aspects. So mm, we need to uh, remember that uh, software developers are humans too, right? No matter how introverted we are, no matter if we prefer to work um, in, a, in a team or rather we would like to lock uh, ourselves up in a basement for eight hours and just, just code, we are humans and we have feelings, okay? And so also we have to remember that the code review is only a written communication. So we cannot hear a, a voice, facial expression, gestures, and thi th things like that. You might uh, be familiar with the sentence that words are only 7% of our whole communication. And actually, that's not true. The 7% is, uh, is not, not, not a real number, but it shows a tendency. Definitely, n uh, words are only a part of our communication. Uh, so we can also uh, experience it, I don't know, writing a joke in email. It might not be uh, funny because somebody didn't m might not hear the uh, the sarcasm and irony in our in our voice all right so the most important thing here would be to mm, be kind to each other simply okay and we can do it by simple things like using a word please like reformat these lines please or use word form we instead of you, like we are missing a test case for x equal to, to zero. 
and we can use also a form of a question. So instead of uh, saying extract the method, we can say, what do you think about extracting a method? Instead of writing add a test with an excla exclamation mark at the end, we can say, how about adding a test? Or have you considered adding a test here? Uh, or instead, you forgot about, we can ask, I would rather, what is your opinion? Okay? But also we should remember that not every question is a, is a good one, because if we ask how in the world you could, you could miss that, you know it is a uh, quite aggressive, offensive question, and we, it's not what we are talking about here. Also, um, I would like you to think for, for a second, how do you feel when you know that the code review is only about pointing mistakes? So uh, uh, all I can get after creating a PR is a bunch of mistakes I made and requests for change. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't make me eager to create small and frequent PRs, okay? So we should be aware that there are different type of comments during code reviews. So there are requests for change, there are suggestions, there are questions, and there are also compliments, appreciations, and saying thank you. So I would really like you, uh, like encourage you to give compliments, like big plus for using composition over inheritance, or thanks for clearing uh, up this unused code, okay? It might seem as a very small thing, uh, but in fact it is a small thing, but it makes a big difference. Also, good idea would be to point places where you learn something, like, I didn't know this library, it looks clean and simple, thanks. Okay? It really uh, makes people feel appreciated, and it's really good to read uh, such a thing in your own uh, pull requests. And so we can see the exaggerated example here at this picture, uh, saying that, okay, at least we don't need to obfuscate uh, this code before shipping. Yeah? And so the rule number one, try to find at least something positive. Yes, it is exaggerated, but I would really like, really like to exaggerate in this direction than in, uh, in the opposite one, not giving any compliments and pluses in our code reviews. And also one note here that there are also uh, researches that shows that being kind to other people makes us, makes our brains actually feel better. So if you don't want to do it for somebody else, you can do it for yourself, actually. Um, another uh, aspect here would be um, presented on this picture, when one guy is asking the other for, for some kind of review and to highlight uh, things that are stupid, yeah, and the guy is taking the highlight highlighter and highlights the, the other guy. And this is what we definitely should not do, okay? So, uh, please, comment code, not people. So, for example, uh, instead of uh, saying that writing, you forgot to write a test, uh, we could uh, simply state, a test is missing, right? Um, also, in that area, um, please keep in mind that um, the code review is uh, quite similar to give, uh, is about giving a feedback, yeah? so we can learn from this area as well. And so, for example, we can use uh, I message uh, instead of you message. Yeah? For example, you didn't initialize those variables versus I don't see where those variables are initialized. Much more um, offensive uh, and much, much less personal. Uh, it's better received by the other person. Also, there is the, um, this theory that it's really beneficial to give free positive comments on every negative comment. If we want, would like, if we're giving a feedback to somebody and would like him to actually receive this feedback truly and uh, apply some changes, it would be good to uh, hear some positive uh, things before. And I'm not saying that you should uh, be uh, making up some things, but be honest and appreciate even small uh, positives. It, it really uh, pays back. Okay? And uh, also, please, um, um, please remember that comments and findings are, more, are rather reasons to celebrate than to be ashamed of. So when I receive many col comments in my pull request, I shouldn't say to myself that, oh my god, my code is, I received like 40 comments in this PR, I must be really bad at, uh, at, at, uh, at programming. No, it's not like that. It, uh, it only means that this process is, is effective and we should be happy. 
also thanks to the code review process, uh, we can notice that uh, nobody actually uh, writes a perfect code. Nobody is perfect. We can al always uh, uh, talk about code and change something, clarify, make it something something different. Okay, few things about. Uh, what we should avoid, so uh, section call, called uh, don'ts. First of all, do not do anything that can be automated. So things like tests, find bugs, check style, sonar, even size of the PR might be automated, yeah? And so let's use all the tools we can because there still will be um, a space for th things that can be automated that has to be done by by us, by developers, so let's make this um, uh, as small part as possible. Uh, another thing I would like to mention is um, do not correct someone else's code. Uh, in that case, uh, Altro will learn nothing and also will be left with this uh, terrible feeling that he, is, he or she is so bad that he or she cannot even fix his own code, so please don't do it. Uh, and last thing we should avoid to do not pair say uh, same authors and reviewers all the time uh, because it will decrease the knowledge sharing uh, so the knowledge will be shared between those pairs instead of the whole uh, whole team uh, it's not an easy task from 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 my experience it's it's just some, sometimes it's often like that that we like somebody better, we, I don't know, we have a desk next to somebody, so, so we pair up with, with the same person, but let's try to avoid it, uh, of course, unless you, are, you work in a team of two people, yeah, that's, you will, you will, uh, that's all you will have. Okay, and one of the actually last <coughs> topics I would like to share with you is, or are disadvantages and costs and how to address them, okay? So, First thing would be that another developer has to spend some time reviewing, okay? Um, and yet, th that is true, but actually uh, this will happen sooner or later because somebody will eventually have to um, use your code or uh, fix some bug or, I don't know, change something in this code, yeah? So thanks to code review, actually, it makes this time explicit that we need the time that another developer reads someone else's code uh, and it also mm, moves it in time it is it is much sooner also when we can um, actually influence the code we can change the code okay so it's actually actually not so bad and another thing would be that uh, there is a time time gap between creating a pr reviewing it applying changes and the final merge and Yes, that is true, and we should do everything to uh, to make this gap uh, as uh, small as possible. Yes, yeah? so do small PRs that address one issue only. We should do it on a regular basis, and all the things I already mentioned. <coughs> and last thing I would like to say here is that the results might not be visible immediately; they are postponed. So if you are only starting. Uh, your, your journey with, with code review, uh, you might not see the results uh, quite soon, like after, I don't know, one or two sprints. It might take longer time, but it doesn't mean it doesn't work. It works, but the results will be visible later. So this is the uh, investment we, will, uh, we are doing that will repay us slightly, uh, slightly later, okay? And in this case, we should only uh, educate others about how it works, and actually, I think that's all we can we can do. All right, so let's just quickly uh, sum all these things up in in seven points. So, a code review is a way to to collaborate, to share knowledge, and improve code quality, but not ex explicit explicitly bug finding tool, all right? This is definitely not a way to point mistakes <coughs> and evaluate developers' performance. Number two, uh, as, a, as an author, we should prepare our PRs, and the smaller we do, the better. Number three, know the context, because the same change can be good or bad, depending on the context. Number four, review on a regular basis, once or twice a day. Number five, do not hurry up, but don't spend too much time, okay? Find a proper pace. Number six, 
use checklists both for author and as a reviewer. And number seven, remember about psychological aspects. Be kind and supportive, give compliments and praises. All right, and I think that's uh, all from me. So thank you very much for your attention. If you have uh, any questions, we still have some time here. So just raise your hand and just ask it. If not, thank you very much.